Pastor, for that intro. Good morning to everybody. Happy Happy Resurrection Sunday. Um, you know, this this past week, um, it was circled on my calendar for a while because maybe a couple of months because, you know, we the kids are on spring break. So Melissa and I took off to spend time with them, you know, and just just hang out, have some fun, just relax a little bit, not think about work or, or anything else, you know, just chill. And about two weeks ago, I get the text from Pastor, bro, do, can you do Easter? And I'm like, yo, God, I'm like, you real funny. You real funny, man. But, uh, but like I said, it's always going to be a yes. You know, as long as I'm physically able to be here, I'm, I'm never going to say no, because that's, that's just what it is. This, you know, I'll, we're here for kingdom building and, and, and that's it, you know? So, but, um, so, but, so thank you. Thank you, pastor, for that, for that, for that intro. And I thank all of you guys for, for your continued patience and, and support, because, you know, I know I am no pastor, Thumbelina Newsom, you know, uh, if she's a work in progress, I for sure am a work in progress, you know? So she likes, pastor always likes to say, um, she always likes to say, Oh, y'all got, y'all got to forgive me. I'm a new pastor. <laughs> don't, don't judge me. So I'm going to tell you like this. I'm not even a pastor. So you can completely miss me with the judgment. Watch this. Pew! See judgment? It's back there on the wall. Okay? Now, nah, but for real, I love y'all. Thank you for all the patience and, and support. And uh, this past week was actually really great. Um, we, uh, Hunter celebrated his seventh birthday on Thursday. And uh, in, in the evening time, you know, we went bowling with the family, you know, had a little outing just with the family or whatever. But in, in, in the morning, morning hours, we, we actually went to the city, which is familiar. Uh, New York City is familiar stomping grounds for us. I grew up in Queens. Melissa, you know, was born in, born in New York. She spent the first few years of her life before moving out here in the Bronx. Her you know, parents grew up in Harlem. Um, you know, my parents worked in the city for my entire youth. And, you know, I, I've been working in the city for the past 15 years. So it's familiar stopping grounds for us. Even when we were dating, uh, Melissa and I would, if we weren't visiting each other's homes, like we would meet in, in the city because that's like, mid, that was like middle ground. She'd take New Jersey transit in, I'd take the subway in and we'd be off on some adventure in the city. So naturally, naturally we, you know, we continue that tradition, you know, with the kids. And so we're out there we're out there quite a bit, just hanging out in Manhattan, doing different things. And this particular time, we went to a museum. It was called uh, Rise, Rise and Why. And it's like, it's part museum and it's part ride, but it's, it's all about New York. And it talks about, you know, the rise, you know, all the different elements of New York that brought, you know, brought, brought upon its rise to, you know, to, fit, to fame, why people want to visit. And, you know, so anything from New York radio to, to music to, you know, the building of the subway, the financial district, uh, Broadway, uh, New York-based movies, you know, the whole museum part was was different elements of that in each room. And, uh, but, you know, but the, the main attraction was the ride at the end. The ride was like six to 10 minutes. And it was like, if you ever been to Disney, it's like, like Avatar or, um, or Star Wars Studios. It was kind of like that, you know, they sit you in the, in the, um, in the seats, they strap you in and raise you about 30 feet in the air. And there's like a, a 180 degree, 40 foot like screen in front of you. And, uh, you know, it's basically a simulator that takes you all over the different landmarks, flies you all over the different landmarks of, of, uh, of New York City. Um, so Pat, it put, took you past the Statue of Liberty, took you, you know, down into the subway, you know, through the financial district, you know, over the Empire State Building. It was really, really cool. It was a really good experience. The museum is called Rise New York. And it's actually a perfect segue into my topic for today, which is Rise. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to be in your presence. We thank you for this day, this Resurrection Sunday, Lord God, that we, that we celebrate as your son died and rose again for the sins of humanity, Lord God. We thank you for making it not robbery to send your only son to die for us, Lord God. And we appreciate you. We love you, Lord God. I ask that you bless everyone on this Zoom today, Father God, that you would allow the message that is brought forth to resonate with them in some way, Lord God, and allow them to, to use it to better themselves 
or to help someone else, Father God. We pray for all the Easter celebrations that are going on today. We pray for your traveling mercies, Lord God, and we ask that you continue to watch over us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today, today is symbolic of a glorious day. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has risen after giving his life to save us all from our sins. And in him, we have new life and our transgressions will not be counted against us. I mean, can you imagine in today's, in today's world still having to make unblemished animal sacrifices for repentance? I don't think I could have done it. I mean, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that humanity probably, probably would not have lasted this long if we had to keep that up. So thank you, Jesus, for being the ultimate perfect sacrifice. However, it doesn't end there for us. There's still work we need to do and also a standard we need to uphold. So because he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, we as his followers must also rise here on earth and share the message. I wanna just start by defining the word rise and dictionary.com provides this following, provides the following. Moving from a lower position to higher one, to come or go up, an upward movement, an instance of becoming higher, an increase in an amount, extent, size, or number. Get up from lying, sitting, or kneeling. Now, any of those definitions can apply here as they all, as they all indicate some sort of elevation. So when I speak of rising, because Jesus rose, I'm referring to the fact that we have new life in Christ and we have an obligation to not be stagnant in our spirituality and seek to grow. In light of Jesus' resurrection, we ought to seek to rise, to seek to move up daily, knowing that he, what he has done for us. I know everybody on this Zoom already does that, but be, just in case, I'm going to provide a little reminder this morning. I talked a little bit about why we should rise. Jesus made it possible for, the sin, for our sins to be forever washed away, no matter what we have done. We are born again because of our belief in his death and his resurrection for that reason. But today, I really want to focus more on how we should rise, how we should go about rising to the occasion. I'm going to do my best to break it down slightly if you bear with me for a few moments. You know, I want to look at the book of 1 Peter, and I'm going to focus on um, chapter 1. But before I go into the text, I just want to give some background. 1 Peter was credited to the Apostle Peter, the very same man who stood by Jesus' side through his ministry, the same man who denied Jesus three times um, towards the end, but also the same man who was redeemed and became one of the first leaders of the early church. Um, so 1 Peter is a letter to Christians on various regions in uh, Asia Minor, which we now know today as Turkey. The letter was providing some encouragement to these Christians who were experiencing some form of persecution for their faith. You know, Peter loved to be a leader of the people, but he had, he had endured a great deal of pain um, to, learn how to, to learn how. So he wrote this book to encourage them to keep, keep going despite um, their sufferings, uh, trials, and persecutions. This book is loaded with ways on how we can rise. Um, I would just like to zero in for a few, for a few here on 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 25. And it starts, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. So in these, in these opening verses, uh, Peter begins his letter with, a greeting to Christians here who have been spread out all across the country. But in his greeting, he also provided a quick reminder to them that because of the intuition of God the Father, the work of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, they were chosen and had a responsibility to carry out the mission to be a light in the darkness for non-believers despite the circumstances. And Peter was, um, Peter's prayer was that grace and peace will be multiplied to them for doing so. Continuing on to verse three. 
Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though not for a little while you have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even, even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This passage of scripture brings me to my first two points about how we can rise. The first one is rejoice through your suffering. This one is always a tough one to hear because nobody feels like cracking a smile, let alone putting on a full on rejoice when they're in pain. The body tells you that when you feel pain, whether physical or emotional, to react in a certain way. Rejoicing through pain and suffering is essentially going against the natural order of things. But if you do it in the midst of your struggle, when you don't feel like it, it can be the most rewarding feeling. It's not just about positive thinking or praying and wishing, wishing away the pain. It's about praising God through the pain because the pain is being used by God in a process in which he wants to elevate you. The word says suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And that hope is in, in, in God's love that will never disappoint. When you make the choice to rejoice through your, pain, through your pain and suffering, it starts a chain reaction that produces qualities that put you in position to go to the next level. My next point is have genuine faith. There's only one way to know you have genuine faith and that's to live it out. It's not about you trusting in your own abilities to save yourself or putting your complete trust in God. So you can say you have it, but it's really a show me thing. When nothing is going right and you have nowhere else to turn, do, do you believe that God and God alone will see you through? Or do you continually take matters into your own hands and try to force an outcome? No, there's a time to do more, like pastors told us a few weeks ago. And there's also a time to be still, but both require genuine faith. Faith to step out and take action when the odds are not in your favor, and faith to know when to let God handle whatever the situation is. Even when you have to take action, he will be there guiding you every step of the way because genuine faith relies on Jesus Christ as Savior alone and not you. So continuing with uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Concerning the salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with great care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. When they spoke of these things, they have now been told, told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. So there's a lot to unpack there in those three verses. And it's made much clearer in the message version of the Bible, which, which you can take a look at when you have time. But for my topic, I just want to focus on the beginning of verse 12, where it says, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. And that brings me to my next point, which is to serve others. We are called to serve. There are times when you have to put the needs of other people ahead of your own. I remember Pastor Priest on a similar topic one time, and she said, whatever title you have, you need to add servant to the end of that. And that stuck with me because even when you're top dog, you still call to serve. 
if the king of kings was called to serve, who are we? We really need to keep that in perspective and understand that we need each other. And if, if you're unwilling to be a servant, you will ultimately end up by yourself. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take it even a step further and say that I'm telling you, don't get in the way of others who are trying to serve either. Just because you're unwilling or only wanna serve the way you wanna serve, doesn't give you the right to block someone else's blessing. Continuing on with verse 13. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as we called you, at just as he call, who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. The next point concerning how we can rise is be sober-minded. Being sober-minded literally means free from intoxicated influences. But it's not just referring to someone drunk on alcohol or, or high on drugs. It, it could be anything. Uh, any influences, anything that influences you in, in one way or another. There are a number of things people can be influenced by um, or addicted to. So it's your job to get rid of the behaviors that, and addictive activities that will prevent you from growing in Christ. It's part of the reason we fast monthly. You know, it's, it's not just to relinquish something for a week and go back to it. I mean, obviously there are things that you know we're going to go back to after the fast, but um, the point, the point is to be in, be in a place where those things aren't above God in your life. And if you're not, if you're not sober-minded regarding the things that distract you, um, your judgment will be clouded and you, and you won't prioritize the right things. Continuing with verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as far as here and reverent fair, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the, from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. My next point is fear the Lord. Fearing the Lord means to have the utmost respect, admiration, and reverence for God. God is all-knowing, he's all-powerful, and ever-present, and still gives us a choice to make whatever decision we want, good or bad. But knowing he has all power in his hands, and that he only seeks to prosper you with his power, doesn't that make you, doesn't that make you want to make wise decisions just a little bit? The word says, fear the, Lord, fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So start your wisdom journey today and give some thought to the decisions that you're making. Ask yourself, how would God view what I'm about to do? Would he be pleased or annoyed with my decision? Once you determine, once you determine that, now you should take the appropriate action that pleases God, right? Well, even with, even with going through the steps in our mind, we still don't always make the right decision, but he knows that and still forgives. You might have to go through some struggles because of your choice, but he still forgives, which brings us right back to why you should fear him in the first place. He gave you a choice. You might not always make the right choice, but he still forgives. Continuing to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass and all their glory is like flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is what, and this is the word that was preached to you. 
That concludes the scripture reading and brings me to my last two points. The first, first of which is love one another. We are called to love wholeheartedly and sacrificially like God loves us. And that is inclusive of everyone, not just the people who love you back. Just think about this. There are so many people who don't know God, can care less about God, or hate God even on this planet. Does he stop the sun from shining on them? Does he stop them from making money? Does he close their mouth so they can't eat? Does he dry up the water so they can't drink? That's love. People that you created using your resources and who you sent your only son to die for don't even acknowledge your existence, yet and still he freely gives. That's love. And that's the kind of love, that agape love, he expects us to have for our brothers and sisters. And even the ones that, even the ones that get on your last nerves, the ones that talk down to you, and the ones that mistreat us. It's not the popular choice, but it's the expected one if the goal is to bring others to Christ. One of my old pastors used to tell, tell the congregation regularly, I love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it. And that's, that's truly how you have to be. Um, it's extremely confusing for someone who lives to be a thorn in your side, to see you show them love knowing they don't deserve it. You might even see the hard exterior that they try to put up melt away a little bit, but even if, even if you don't, it still makes you feel good for not allowing the behavior to control yours. And my final point is read your Bible. If your desire is to know God and to elevate your knowledge of him, there is no better place to find that information. The character of God is stamped all throughout the Bible. In fact, everything you wanna know about life is embedded within those pages. It's the best selling book of all time having sold 5 billion copies to date. But guess what? It's still not enough. Last fall, Melissa and I visited the Museum of the Bible on a trip to DC. Uh, it was six floors of Bible-related history. It was amazing. And in the middle of one of the floors was an archive with um, like, a like a library with thousands of different languages, um, thousands of different, different languages translated. And on the whole other side, there were translations that didn't exist yet. Just think about that. There are people on God's planet that a translation of his word doesn't even exist in the language they speak. And we take for granted the fact that 50 different versions exist in English. The most important instruction manual known to man is a paperweight on your desk, a decoration piece on your nightstand, or a net that sees the least amount of activity on our phones. Pastor uses the acronym all the time. These are your basic instructions before living earth, the B-I-B-L-E. If you wanna know how to win at life, no matter what your current situation is, read your manual. So on this Resurrection Sunday, as we celebrate our risen savior, let us reflect on how we can rise above our circumstances, rise and step out on faith, rise and help someone other than ourselves, rise up, and be your guard, be a guard against, your enemy, against the enemy. Rise and show God how much you truly care about what he thinks. Rise and love even when it's not convenient. Rise and take up your sword, the word of God, and be the light in the darkness we are called to be. Thank you, everyone. Love you guys. Thank you, Terrence. God bless you. Rise. Listen, that's a tough, that's a tough one. As a leader, as a pastor, I still struggle with rising above because I want to be petty. And that's not God. God ain't, we don't serve a petty God, right? So uh, it's funny you talk about the agape love. I had a conversation with my dad and I was saying how, explaining to him how I am. And he said, that's not agape love. And I said, well, I love the person, but I don't have to like the person. I, I said, well, if you could show me in the Bible, I was trying to act ignorant. Don't judge me, judge yourselves. I'm just telling my, my story because I have to learn how to, he was trying to teach me to rise above. In my mind, I felt like I was rising above because I love. That's it. I said, the Bible didn't say like. And the Bible didn't say I got to do any of this stuff. It just said I had to love. And I said, I love with all my heart. He like, yeah, we got we to work on you. you you're not there yet. You, you, you got to get there. 
So y'all pray for me, because Terrence, that's a tough message to rise above when somebody has slapped you and you're trying to live holy and read the B-I-B-L-E and it say, turn the other cheek. I struggle, but that's my business. That is my, I know y'all, this is why I love this church because y'all don't judge and y'all don't struggle. This is amazing. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. But I think that was a great message. Thank you so much for, for just teaching us what it looks like to rise above. And it begins with the Bible, it, the Alpha and Omega. It begins with the word of God, knowing God and having a relationship. So Terrence, thank you so much for that message, y'all. Let's give Terrence a round of applause. Woo, woo, woo. Although nobody can hear y'all. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you, Terrence. Thank you for the message, Terrence. Yes. So if we great, don't, Terrence. um, yes, yes. Terrence, parents, would you like to have any words before we close out? I know. I'm good. Okay. How about you, Pop? It's a blessing. The word is a blessing. Continue yes, to is. keep him, can continue to pray and keep him covered in the blood of Jesus. That's, that's all wish for him. That Amen. he will be strengthened and encouraged. Yes. God Do bless you, wish you that all. For us too? You gonna yes. wish that for us too? Yes, you will be everybody. strengthened and encouraged and that the Lord will give you the desires <laughs> of your heart and a special place where you can come back together again. That's well, my prayer for you. you know, God, God, you, always says, yes. God always says that um, bring up a child in a way it should go and it will never depart from it. And I, I you know, I, I just, Thank God for turns because he never leaves the church. He's always there. Even oh wow. Yes. Amen. Thank you, God. We appreciate it. We appreciate Thanks. all of you. May God bless you all. We love Amen. you guys. Thank you. Love Anybody you. else want to say anything to Terrence or have any questions, comments? You know, I'd like to leave the floor open at the end. If not, would there be any volunteers to take us home so everybody can enjoy their Easter dinner and their fun and uh, what Michelle say? Uh, egg, uh, what what the kids do? Uh, that's Easter how you know hunt. my kid don't do it. What is it? Easter egg hunt. Thank you. Easter <laughs> egg hunt. Couldn't get it out <laughs> so that the kids can really enjoy their day today. Anybody would like to volunteer? Thank you, Angel. You always volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> amen. 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 Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. 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 Father God, we're just so grateful and we're so thankful, oh God. First, we thank you for Terrence, oh God, and his heart, oh God, and his, his obedience to you, Lord God, his diligence to study and to, and to bring a word, oh God, so eloquently, oh God, and so well prepared, oh God. We thank you for him and his family, oh God, and pray your blessing upon him, Father God. Lord, we just pray, oh God, as we look forward to this day, Lord God, with our families, oh God, and the sun shining, oh God, that we would never forget, oh God, the price that you paid, oh God, the cost that it cost you, Lord God, to, to redeem us, oh God, and to give us this great salvation that we have, oh God, and help us to do all of the things that, that Terrence pointed out, Father God, that we may receive the blessing that you have put forth for us, oh God, as we are obedient, oh God, and as we put our faith into action, oh God, that we would be blessed in doing these things, Father God. We thank you, we praise you for each and every person that's associated with TG and our brothers and sisters, we pray your blessing upon their day and upon their time, O oh God, upon their fellowship, O oh God. Let our words be seasoned, O oh God, with salt, O oh God, that would draw your, your name, O oh God, into the conversation, Father God. And we thank you and we praise you and we commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. 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 Enjoy the Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Have a great day. Bye. 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 B